Hi, this is Dr. Lena Haji, licensed clinical psychologist. I wanted to talk today a little bit about something I posted last week in regards to self-harm. I'm kind of appalled at how much of an increase I've seen in self-harm over the last few years, both in forensic and clinical practice, particularly among young people. So I looked up a couple of stats and per the APA in 2015, adolescents had a 17% rate of um, engaging in self-harm once in their lifetime. Adults were a lot lower at a 5% lifetime prevalence rate. Um, so why do people self-harm? Typically self-harm includes injury to oneself, um, usually cutting, it can be head banging. There are a lot of ways to self-harm, but we're gonna go with cutting for the purposes of this video. So one of the reasons people self-harm is to relieve negative emotional states, any kind of internal turmoil, distress, depression, anxiety. Individuals who self-harm find that it gives them a release and a relief. Uh, maybe they don't have adaptive coping skills and this is the best thing they know how to do. There's also anger, self-punishment, um, a way of directing anger inward as opposed to outward. There's also attention seeking, which we need to be very careful for because what is the attention the individual is seeking and why? That's still clinically pertinent data. And of course, there's just people who don't have any psychiatric disorders or psychological problems and really engage in self-harm to get their needs met, needs met as a manipulative secondary gain. You see this a lot in inmates who want to be in mental health, who are avoiding something, who want access to medications. So it's important not to just assume that everybody who self-harms is borderline or has some sort of psychiatric disorder. However, it is extremely important that anytime anybody engages in self-injury that we do a thorough comprehensive suicide risk assessment.